my parents came to town and I said we simply must go to the Chicago Institute of Art. So we went and we had the loveliest time. We saw the loveliest exhibit on Impressionism. Uh, really just wonderful. Original works by all the greats. Uh, Monet, uh, Manet, uh, Degas, Tussaud. All of our favorites in just one room. You know, it's amazing how the artists of this time were able to capture light and color in their paintings and use such tiny little brush strokes to create such beautiful landscapes. Really, truly, uh, so remarkable. We loved it so much. Uh, and it just so happens that we chose the perfect time to go and visit the museum. We got to see a special one time only exhibit. Always such a treat, especially for out of town guests like my parents. Uh, somebody had just freshly taken a shit right onto the museum floor. Such a treat. Um, we smelled it first, and uh, then we turned the corner to where the art installation had just been placed. Uh, really amazing. The artist was nowhere to be seen, uh, but in studying the piece, you could uh, really sense the uh, feeling of urgency that the artist must have felt uh, while creating it. Um, the dollops of shit. Uh, created a trail going down the stairs and around the corner to the bathroom, just telling a wonderful, remarkable story of pain, uh, panic, uh, 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 and release. Uh, the release being both figurative and literal, of course. Uh, the artist might have been wearing uh, shorts or a skirt of some kind, uh, a tool that allowed the shitballs to tumble down the artist's legs and land on the floor for all of us lucky museum patrons to witness. Uh, truly just wonderful. Um, some people might call this artist an amateur uh, due to the long strides and the hurried nature of the piece. Um, a bolder, more experienced shit artist might have just pulled down his pants and left a pile right there on the middle of the floor for everyone to look at. But a piece like this, the one that we were lucky enough to witness, it spoke to me in ways that a regular shit pile never, never could. <laughs> Truly, it was so remarkable. Uh, thank you. This has been my critique of the Chicago Institute of Art uh, exhibit on Impressionism. Thank you. Let me try that one out. Uh, <laughs> um, so that story that I just told is a true story. Uh, my parents came to town and we went to the museum and somebody had shit on the floor. <laughs> that's 100% that's true. Um, and it sucks because whenever my parents come to town, I always try to impress them. Like, I want to show them that I, you know, I know the city and I'm living the city life and I'm living it right. Uh, <laughs> so like, they'll come to town and I'm like, oh, what do you guys want to do today? You guys want to go to the museum? Cool, well, I can get us there. Let's take the, take the red line down to the Monroe stop, no big deal. You're gonna have to walk a couple blocks, hope your feet can handle it. <laughs> oh, Dad, you're having trouble with your venture card? No problem, beep, I uh, got you in there. <laughs> we get to the museum, I'm like, oh, Dad, put away your wallet, no big deal, I got this. How much are tickets? $60, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> No problem, $60, yeah, having a good day. And then we're walking around and everything's going great and I'm like, I did good. <laughs> I did a good thing. <laughs> um, and somebody shit on the floor. Uh, and my parents like looked at me as though it was my fault. <laughs> like, I, I didn't do it, I didn't shit on the floor. <laughs> um, it seems like stuff like this happens every time my parents come to visit. It's always like a billion degrees below zero or like the trains are delayed by 80 hours. I'm like, guys, it's not normally like this. <laughs> um, like one time when we were walking in, we saw this like fireman get out of a fire truck and run and like pick a fight with another man on the street. <laughs> and my mom's like, uh, aren't they supposed to be protecting you? <laughs> like, mm. Uh, another time, a dog said fuck you to us. Um, and at one, time, one time we went to the zoo and we're having, this, we're having this really special moment with the gorillas. Like, we're like, oh my God, they're just like us. They have faces like us and their hands. They're just like us. Uh, and it's really amazing. And um, this gorilla reached back, pulled a turd out, out of his own butt and uh, bit it like a cigar. <laughs> like he was just like, uh, yeah, see? Yeah. 
And once again, my dad looked at me like, Mm-mm. I was like, Dad, it's not me. <laughs> um, yeah, so my mom's blind, and uh, <laughs> uh, guys, stop laughing. Uh, <laughs> No, my mom, she's legally blind. She has a disease called Stargardt's and it caused her to lose most of her vision. Uh, this is something that I grew up with, my brother grew up with. We're used to helping her out when she needs it, but she's actually like amazing at getting around on her own. She doesn't really need a lot. Um, sometimes I milk it a little bit. <laughs> like usually when I have a show, there's usually somebody who's like, dude, did you see that lady in the front row with the binoculars? It's like you're in the front row, lady. You don't need binos, you creep. And then I'll be like, uh, yeah, no, I'm so sorry. That's actually my mom. Um, she's blind and she needs the binoculars to see her daughter's face. <laughs> but you're right, it's really weird. I'll ask her to stop. And then they'll be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. And then I'll be like, sucker. <laughs> um, so, <when> my <laughs> so when my mom and I go to museums together, you know, she'll usually need me to like read things to her and describe things to her uh, if she can't see them very well. Um, and you know, museums are always so quiet. Like people are just walking around going, mm. Mm, yeah. uh, so I always try to keep it quiet. My mom's usually like, you know, getting close to whatever it is and I'll sit there and I'll be like, okay, uh, right here we have a painting called Bunch of Lilacs and uh, it is a woman holding a bunch of lilacs. And then my mom, who has no volume control, will be like, oh, that's a beautiful painting! <laughs> Look at that! I can really see the detail! And everyone will be like, mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes I'll, you know, kind of mess with her, pick on her a little bit. Like, we went to the Lasco exhibit, and I was like, um, okay, here we have a man and a bull. Uh, I can tell that it is a bull because of the bull horns, and I can tell that it is a man because of his big stick penis that's poking out. <laughs> And she was like, stop it! And I was like, Mom, I'm just trying to help you out the best I can. He has a big, he's got a big stick penis and is pointing at the bowl. What do you want me to tell you? Uh, and then um, we, we turn a corner and there's a giant blown up version of the same picture. And she goes, oh yeah, I can really see the penis now. <laughs> Couldn't see it before, but I can see it now. <laughs> and this man just looked at us like, and I literally just went, she's blind. <laughs> um, just in case you guys want to see that, um, I actually brought it, I brought it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> can everyone see it? You guys, can you see that? It's, he's got a pointy stick penis. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, as, you know, as a blind woman, uh, my mom doesn't, she's not always disadvantaged. Sometimes she has an advantage. Uh, <laughs> that's so rude. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one time we went to this haunted house and this is like our neighborhood haunted house. Like we know the people who run it. Uh, we know a lot of the people who work there. Uh, I've worked there, my dad's worked there. Um, so we're going to see my dad and she's like, I just need you to walk in front so I can follow your feet. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, so throughout the entire haunted house, like I would be the first one to enter the room and immediately all these people would jump up and go, Rrr! and I'd be like, ah! <laughs> and then they would go, Andrea, oh, it's Andrea. That's my mom's name. They're like, oh my God, Andrea, are you going to the ladies luncheon on Friday? What are you making? You should make your cucumber sandwiches. People love those. And then meanwhile, I'm like sitting in the corner. I'm like, and then like, we continue on the next room, same thing, boo, ah! Oh my God, Andrea, I heard you're making cucumber sandwiches. Uh, remember, Patty Tupper, she can't eat the wheat, so you should also bring something else. Um, and then by the end of this haunted house trip, um, I had pissed my pants and uh, developed PTSD. And um, my mom had planned an entire menu for her ladies' lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she was like, uh, that was lovely. <laughs> um, so, growing up, my mom uh, always had a big problem with me and boys, which is so weird. It's like, she acts like I'm some kind of floozy or something, which doesn't make any sense. Like, what would make her think that? <laughs> Thank you, dude. We're not going to make out. <laughs> uh, that was so stupid. <laughs> 
Uh, no, but seriously, my mom has thought that I was like some kind of slut uh, since I was like six. <laughs> uh, and I think I know why. Um, when I was in kindergarten, uh, I befriended a boy with autism named Josh, and uh, he didn't have any other friends, so my mom thought it was really sweet, and she would always be like, oh, how are things with you and Josh? And she would always ask me about him. So one day after school, she was like, did you have a good day? What did you and Josh do? And I was like, um, well, me and Josh, we uh, finger painted, and then we counted blocks, uh, and then we pretended that we were horses, uh, and then we had sex. <laughs> And she was like, what? <laughs> she picked up the phone and immediately called my teacher. And my teacher's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, she's obviously not having sex. Uh, this is a kindergarten classroom. Uh, you might want to go ahead and ask your daughter what she meant. Uh, so she did. She was like, Meredith, what did you mean when you said you had sex with Josh? What does the word sex mean to you? Uh, and this is literally word for word what I said to my mom. I said, sex is when two people look at a beautiful flower or star and, uh, <laughs> and agree that it is indeed important. <laughs> So, you know, end of story. Uh, I, was, I was misinformed. Uh, uh, no big deal, you know? She should have just moved on and been like, okay, well, that's not true. Don't say that word. Uh, but no, instead she, instead, she was like, dude, my daughter's into some fucked up shit. Um, and after that, it was always like, you know, why are you hanging out with that boy? What are you and that boy doing? You can't go anywhere alone with that boy. And I'm like, mom, if you had just, if she had just taken a minute to step back and assess the situation, uh, she would have realized that I, I was a loser. Um, and I wasn't gonna be getting any action for a long time. Uh, first of all, I collected cat toys. Um, uh, <laughs> we didn't have a cat. Uh, <laughs> uh, second of all, I, I had this weird obsession with Beethoven. And I don't even mean that cool dog. I mean Beethoven, the composer. <laughs> Um, like while other girls were thinking about, you know, maybe wanting to go into a closet and make out with a boy, I had this weird fantasy that I would be practicing piano one day and Beethoven's ghost would come out of the wall. <laughs> you play it better than I did, kid. <laughs> That's all, nothing sexual. <laughs> I just really wanted to impress Beethoven. <laughs> um, I also had this other weird thing that I loved to do that I actually secretly still love to do, um, which is I would uh, put on my favorite music and then I would sit in a chair that had a high back uh, that covered up here and I would literally slam my head against the chair to the beat of the music. Like, <laughs> 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 And this was like my special alone time. Uh, to <laughs> and, um, and usually I'd be like writing some kind of scene in my head, like a movie scene or some kind of story. So I'd have my eyes closed shut really tight. <laughs> um, and I also went through this really weird phase where, um, and I later learned that this is some kind of like, it's some kind of form of OCD, I guess. But uh, I went through this really weird phase where I couldn't imagine anyone's face or anything's face without putting a big cartoon mustache on it <laughs> in my head. Um, so like literally like I'd be sitting there trying to think about like people or characters in my movies uh, and a big cartoon mustache would just appear and I'd be like, no, 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 you do not have a mustache. Um, so, <laughs> if my mom had witnessed this behavior, uh, she could have just gone, you know what, I don't think Meredith's gonna have boyfriends. <laughs> it's gonna be a long time before Meredith has boyfriends. Uh, but no, she was like, my daughter's a no <laughs> Um My first boyfriend, his name was Donnie, and the, the whole reason that I started dating him was because he looked exactly like Samwise Gamgee from the Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> uh, 
And I, I loved Lord of the Rings. I saw the first Lord of the Rings nine times in theaters uh, within a month. Um, like, literally, I spent 27 hours of my life watching the same film <laughs> over and over again in a month's time. Um, so I loved it. And I saw Donnie in the hallway, and I was like, oh, who's that sexy little hobbit? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> um, and like any other creep, I uh, found out what his name was, who his friends were. I found out that he was valedictorian, Boner City. <laughs> um, and I approached him and we started talking and then we immediately started dating because we were both very desperate. Um, and my mom hated it. She was like, why do you have to be dating a boy? No! Uh, and she came up with all these rules. Like, we weren't allowed to go anywhere near my bedroom. Um, we weren't allowed to actually go on dates. Like, he wasn't allowed to pay for me or take me out somewhere alone. And I was allowed to ride in Donnie's car with him driving if there was another person in the car with us. I was not allowed to ride in Donnie's car if it was just the two of us. And at the time, I was like, Mom, that doesn't even make sense. It's not like Donnie's gonna be safer if there's more people in the car. In fact, statistics show otherwise, so it doesn't make any sense, Mom. <laughs> but now, when I think back to it, it's like, oh my God, was my mom worried that I was gonna be giving Roadhead? <laughs> Dude, Mom, who did you think I was? <laughs> Could you seriously imagine me and Donnie being like, all right, Donnie, we have approximately 10 minutes until we arrive at Captain Frosty's. Uh, I realize that we are in broad daylight, but not to worry. I have purchased two cloaks. Uh, they are exact replicas of the ones the hobbits wore to Rivendell. <laughs> Go ahead, put this on. Our identities will remain a secret. And uh, why don't you just go ahead and get that dick out, Donnie. <laughs> just get that dick out. Uh, uh, it didn't happen that way. Uh, <laughs>